Good morning, Word of Life Church and all of our faithful YouTube friends. I trust you've had a good week. I know that uh, God's got an exciting week ahead for us. Uh, you know what? There's been some dips and valleys in our lives, but we know that the Lord delivers us out of all of those troubles. And when we begin to uh, continually have our focus on the Word and what God has to say, you know, the Bible says that uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And wisdom is something that uh, you can't actually buy. Wisdom is sometimes something that you experience. But I think that we can also glean a lot of wisdom from those around us or in the Word of God for those who have gone before us. And something that sort of struck me this week as we uh, begin to enjoy springtime and it starts to warm up and we're busy planting and getting flower beds ready and planting grass where there should be grass where Maggie hasn't completely harvested our yard and we're starting to get things ready and I talked a little bit uh, a week or two ago about seeds and how those seeds will start to grow but it's important to be patient during those times and I think that you know we talked again about patience having its perfect work in you that we don't actually like that because patience means to be sitting still and allowing the process to work. Sometimes our heart gets really frustrated wanting what someone else has or well I wish my life had turned out this way or well you know if I'd only done it better that way and, and what happens if you concentrate too much on that if you don't plant the seeds that God asks you to you'll live in a life of turmoil, regret, uh, guilt, frustration, and then that actually translates over into worry and fear. Fear for the future, fear of what does tomorrow bring. But you know, the Bible says that, it says over here in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with gratitude. And I want to stop at gratitude for just a minute. All of us have been through things in life. We've been through pits and valleys and, and, and it, holes that it feels like you just can't get out of but, but the Bible says according to this it says to be anxious for nothing but by everything and so everything is what you've gone through everything is what you're going through everything is what you desire but he says I want you to look at this with gratitude gratitude is sort of thanking the Lord in the middle of the process we don't like the process the process sometimes makes us feel like uh, you know you're undone or I, I just can't figure this out or I just can't do this or I just can't find the victory but I, I want to encourage you in that process doesn't it sort of place us in the hands of the Lord doesn't it place us in the hands of our Creator doesn't it place us in, in in you know our lives in the hands of our Almighty God and when you begin to really begin to look at that suddenly gratitude will take over and gratitude is something where you're thankful for the process you're thankful for the past even though there may be hurts there may be things there may be pain in that process but gratitude begins to pull you out of regret. It begins to pull you out of what could have been. It begins to pull you out of what should have been. I've done many weddings over the years, and one of the things that I can truly, unless, you know, I, anyway, I really believe this, that when the weddings that I've performed, when that couple was standing there, and we used to, I would always kind of share that through our marriage counseling, but when they were standing there with that love in their eyes and, and, and we're about to talk about our vows and seeing that the love and admiration that they have for one another, they're about to embark on a big commitment, a commitment that really should be designed for a lifetime. But the one thing I've often thought is I've never saw two people at an altar wishing it was the other, uh, the, the last boyfriend or girlfriend standing in front of them, right? I mean, let, let's hope not. I'm sure that that's happened. But for the most part, the two people were in love, and so even though that process wasn't fun getting there, maybe there was some breakups in the past, or maybe there was some situations in the past where they went from one crisis and they moved out of that crisis, and they came to the place of where today they were about to uh, enjoy holy matrimony. So nobody likes that crisis. Nobody likes, you know, there, there's a book uh, written years ago by Edwin Lewis Cole talking about entering and leaving crisis. Nobody likes that because crisis isn't fun. But the only way you'll ever begin to embrace the new or, or, or what God has for you is to exit where you've been and begin to enter into what God has. And so in this scripture here in Philippians, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with gratitude. 
So gratitude is thanking the Lord in the middle of the process. When I look at my lawn, there's an area by our house where Maggie has got a hole no less than two feet. It's absolutely incredible how something could dig that quickly, dig down that far. And so as I filled that in and now I'm waiting for the grass to grow, that's a process. Now I could look at that every day and get discouraged and say, well, you know, you, you, this dog just is destroying our yard. It's just, it's just kind of wrecking things the way we just never planned that. But she is still in the puppy stage. So there will be a time and, and, and we're going to believe God that that's way, way, way down the road that we won't have Maggie anymore. But I'm going to learn to begin to thank God for Maggie in the process. It's not fun at times. Your process might be far deeper than raising a family dog and filling in holes in your yard. Maybe your process is trying to find that job. Or maybe your process is trying to mend a broken heart. Or maybe your process is trying to mend a relationship that's been shattered. I want to encourage you today. The Bible says to be anxious for nothing. But by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. But I think that the catalyst in all of that, it said, we read that there a little bit, with gratitude needs to be uh, sort of tucked away in your prayer. Thanking the Lord in the middle of the process. Thanking the Lord in the middle of the situation. Thanking the Lord even when it's not fun. And sometimes those are the hardest things to do because it's not fun going through the process. It's not fun having pain. But at times when we begin to begin to thank God that in the middle of all of those things that we're going through, the Bible says that we will come out because in Christ we have the victory. Sometimes the victory that you have, and again, going back to the, to the married couple, I've talked to people at times in the middle of a real sad breakup, they would never see that there could ever be a future. They would never see that they could ever be happy again. But if you begin to look at, take gratitude, if you begin to, to literally give your life over to Christ and say, it's in your hands. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to honor you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to obey you with gratitude, thanking God for that process. Seeds are growing in your life, positive or negative. And so I just found it interesting because our human hearts at times, we get tricked into living in regret or we get tricked into living in what we could have had or what should have been, or, you know, we, we call those the woulda, coulda, shoulda we get tricked. Maybe there's been loss in your life and you say, you know, I, I could have did things differently or had I only said things differently. But the Bible says that when you begin to live that life of gratitude and thanking God that in that process, he will strengthen you and he will carry you. We talked about that scripture in Isaiah, my favorite one, where it says he sustains me and he carries me. So feelings are something that we should embrace but God in the middle of all those feelings says when you come before him with thanksgiving when you come before him with praise when you come before him with uh, uh, gratitude for the process we don't like the process we don't like the process that we're going through at times but if you'll stay the course you'll come out on the other side I'm, I'm, uh, I'm challenged or I love this scripture here in Proverbs 19, verse 23, it says, For the fear of the Lord leads to life. Then one rests content, untouched by trouble. I think contentment is something that we all would really like to find. But I believe it starts with a choice. It starts with a choice saying, number one, we're going to have to trust God in the process. Number two, the word says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so if you need wisdom, we know the Bible says to ask God. So ask God in the process. So this is the part that we don't like. Right now, in your process, you might be very uncomfortable. Your heart might be broken. Your spirit might be just, just depleted. Your body might be really tired. You need to come before the Lord and say, Lord, what needs to change in my life? What process needs to move me from point A to point B? What crisis that I'm sitting in, can I exit that crisis and move into what you have for me and to move into what is new for me? Because we know that his mercy is new every morning. So you've got that opportunity every day. But it starts with you. We, we've talked about humility before where only you can do that. I can't make you humble. That's something where you come before God and say, God, what are you saying in the situation? What are you saying to my life? What, what things do I need to change to come out of the crisis that I'm in and move in to the new plan that you have? You know, in the Old Testament, talking about moving into the promised land, there was something that they had to leave the old behind and embrace the new. You as a Christian need to leave the old behind 
and embrace the new. Know that God is moving in your life. Know that he desires a good day ahead of you. Know that even though, and, and remember this, he never said you weren't gonna have trials and temptations. He never said you weren't gonna have testing. He never said you weren't gonna go through these things, but through Christ in all these things, we are more than conquerors. I'm kind of preaching here today, but I want you to catch this. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer. Everything means the stuff that you don't like. Everything means the stuff that frustrates that, you know, the, the life out of you. That, that when, you're, when you're anxious or when you're frustrated, you're not productive. And if your life is not productive, we go back to that human heart that says, well, I wish what somebody else, uh, I had what somebody else has, or I wished I had done things differently, or I wish my life had turned out different. Don't wait till the last day that you're alive to say, you know, I wished I, don't, don't live in that regret where you're saying, well, I don't know if I, begin to embrace today and say, you know what, God, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I'll move from crisis there I, where I am, and I'll move into what God has for me. But I'm going to make that decision to have gratitude because that's what will carry you. That's what will push you through. That's what will, you know, in, in those times when it just seems so dark, when those, you know, and, and you don't know which end is up, begin to just call on the Lord and say, Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm giving I, my thanks for the process. I'm giving you my thanks for the breath in my lungs. I, I, I'm giving the thanks for all of the things that I have in my life, the people that are around me. If we begin to look at gratitude, and then it's amazing because everybody needs that sun to shine. I don't know about you guys, but the last couple of weeks when the sun was just, it was gloomy, there was no sun, it was cold. Man, it's a whole lot nicer to just roll back in bed and say, I'm just gonna stay put. But when that sun begins to shine, it begins to give you that spring in your step and that desire to move forward. God wants the same for you and I, but it starts with gratitude. It starts with a choice to say, Lord, in the situation that I'm in, somehow I'm gonna find gratitude. Don't allow your heart to compare to everybody else. Don't allow your heart to get bitter or resentful or especially unforgiving. Those are things that will block what God wants for you. Then remember Proverbs 19, 23, for it says the fear of the Lord leads to life. Well, what does the fear mean? Does it mean to be afraid of God? No, it means to listen to him. It means to listen to what is it that I need to do? What is it that I need to do to move from my crisis into my promised land? Then it says, and if you do, then one will rest and be content, untouched by trouble. Find that place where you can rest and be content. Be okay with what you have. Be okay with where you are. Be okay with the people that are around you. Rest and be content in that. And let God begin to add to your life. Let God begin to multiply your life. And just like that great big hole in my yard, you may look out there every other day and it look like that grass seed is not working. But if you have done the right things, if you put the seed in the ground, if you fertilize it, if you water it, it will grow. I promise you this, you may be watching this today wondering which end is up. And if you'll begin to live that life of gratitude, if you'll begin to call on the Lord, if you'll begin to find your rest in Him, the seeds of life will grow. And you will move from crisis into a victory that God has for you. You will move from one opportunity to another. The Bible says we live by faith and we move faith to faith, glory to glory. Didn't say it wasn't going to be uncomfortable because sometimes it sure is. But trust in the Lord. Begin to just surrender your life over to him and say, God, I'm not going to be uh, living in the past. I'm not going to look at what everybody else and say, oh, poor me. Eeyore did that. Didn't get him out of you know Winnie the Pooh. But in your life. Begin to trust and say, you know what? Chin up, the sun's shining, and there is going to be a better day ahead for you and I. So let's trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. Let's come before Him with thanksgiving. Thank Him and find contentment. And then in all of that, in your heart, ask for wisdom. Ask for the Lord to bring you wisdom on how to make the next step. And you'll come out of that on the other side, and you will cross over. Anyway, I don't want to ramble on. Just before this, my wife had messaged me and said that there's a bird flying around in our bathroom because I uh, they, they get in our dryer vent. And so uh, anyhow, I moved the dryer to see if there's a nest up in there. And she messaged me and said it's flying around the house. So we'll see how well she's handling that 
moment. We'll see how well she's handling that trial or situation. But we're going to go and uh, hopefully uh, the bird has flown outside and, and uh, the day will be saved. But uh, blessings to everyone. Let's just pray. If you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, if you've never surrendered your life over to him, that is the first thing you can do to move from crisis into what God has for you. So if you'd like to pray with me, I, it starts with you inviting Christ into your heart, surrendering your life over to him, and letting him be your pilot. Not a co-pilot. He wants to pilot your life. Amen? Lord Jesus, we just repent right now for those areas of our life that are sinful and Father, we just invite you into our heart right now. We believe that Jesus died and rose again so that we could have new life. And today, Lord, we trust in you. Today, Lord, we live for you. And we give all of our crisis, all of our situations over to you. And Father, we find contentment in you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Blessings. I'll keep you posted on how the bird makes out. And uh, we'll talk next week. Take care.